You are welcome to DBA TV, where we discuss everything international trade. Uh, in this series, you are going to be learning about what each of the Nigerian states have to offer as far as export is concerned. You know, I have maintained that Nigerian states are billionaires in dollars and that they can be self-sufficient. But, you know, because a number of governors comes in, not the intention of generating income, but with the intention of sharing the money. Uh, but in this particular episode, we have put together a series of videos for all the Nigerian states from Abia to Zamfara. And this to enable the new governors that are coming in or the new administration in different states of the country to be able to take a cue from what we've shared in this video, which, by the way, covers the peculiarity of each state apart from the preamble. It talks about the profile of the profit, or sorry, of the debt <laughs> and income of the state. It talks about the potential of the state. It talks about the purchaser of the product the state have to offer. And of course, the pro pro exportable product and also the proposal we have for the state and how the state can directly profit from exporting raw materials, manufactured goods, uh, solid minerals, and agri commodity. I believe this will be of interest to you and maybe to your governor or the commissioner, wherever it is in your state. Thank you very much for joining. Enjoy your, uh, yourself as you learn through what maybe your state is what we are looking at today, what Nigerian state have to offer. Happy listening. Thank you very much. So we start the preamble today. The gas state was carved out of Kano State. I served in the gas state. And I've been to a number of local governments in this state. From Duse to Kiawa. I actually served in Benin Kudu. This was local government where I served. Then you have Buji, you have Guaram, Kiawa, Jahu, Miga. <laughs> the the NYC orientation camp was in Gumel. Jigasa is a very interesting state with a huge potential. This state can avoid dependence on federal allocation through export. And I'll be focusing on a particular product in Jigawa and the upper is Sesame Seed. That will be the analysis I'll be looking at on how the government can profit for it itself. This is one of the states that is said to be less developed or non-viable. I don't believe any state in Nigeria is non-viable, sincerely, because, and a state like Jigawa, I mean, if you are traveling from, let me show you that map again. You know, I travel from one end of the state from somewhere like this, Birmingham Kudu, and you are going to Kazauri, and you have to pass inside Kano, or you are going from here, you are going to Hadeja. I mean, when you see the vast mass of land and you see the plain land, plain land, you see the opportunity for cultivation in this state, then you understand this part that export can boost the GDP of this state. It's opportunity also available to create, to create opportunity for SME to grow in the state. Export can help the state to depend less on domestic market. Export can help the state to earn export proceeds and grow revenue for the state. Export can help the state to make farming and rural life become more lucrative. Export can help the government state to gain global market share and recognition. It can make the state to be home of creativity and innovation. Home of creativity and innovation. Because of the Processing of product for export, it become a catalyst for industrialization. It's a job creating opportunity for the state. It helps the state to know the value of what it has as competitive advantage. It can make Jigawa a state with low income to lead the way for other states to follow. It can make the state to be independent of the federal government. Because like I show every week for different states, I'm going to show you again this week, how Jigawa State will generate money directly from export, which is why I said this is the kind of question we should be asking our intended governor or those that will be contesting, either for first or second term, that look, don't tell us you don't have money 
enough money to do what you promise because you can generate this income yourself and not by taxing the people that are not even well paid, but by tapping into the potential that the state already possessed. It can make the state to be independent of the federal government and there are numerous incentives for exporters in the state to enjoy. Export create opportunity to maximize the indigenous of the state abroad. It can help to help in poverty education in the state, quit the league of the state depending on wasting assets like oil. It can help in reviving the economy of the state, slow down rural urban migration, create tax free opportunity for exporters in the state, and help the state to utilize its ideal capacity. The state also can boost its viability through export. Export can create wealth for the citizens of this state. It can help the state extract the potential product for export found in the state, yet from implementing competition and zeroing on its area of strength. So what do you see in Jigawa today? What do you see in Jigawa today? What do you see in Jigawa today? Do you see unemployment? Of course, they are unemployment. Of course, they are unemployment. What do you see in Jigawa today? Do you see poverty? Of course, they are rap poverty. So I'm not disputing the fact that there are poverty. I'm not feeling the fact that there are poverty. But I think we should begin to see the opportunities in population. Opportunities, there are frustration, of course, but we see opportunities in farming, opportunities in mining, and opportunities in the population of this state. So what are the peculiarities of Jigawa State? Jigawa State was created in 1991 out of Kano by the Bangladesh regime, and the capital is in Duse. I heard the capital was supposed to be in Adeja, but somehow, somehow Duse got it. You know, when I was serving, I remember Duse was a very small town with a, only one road passing through the entire local government headquarters. I mean, state headquarters. But I heard there has been a lot of improvements in the state since then. Situated in central northern Nigeria, um, cover 23,154 square kilometers. The gas station here boundary with Kano, Kastina, Bauchi, Yobe, and Niger Republic. I remember copper going to Megateri Market. Megateri market is a border market. Megateri is a border town with the Nigerian Republic with a market where Nigerians and uh, Nigerian Republic people come together to um, do business, to trade. The guy who got generally can ride by undulating land with sand dunes of various sizes spanning several kilometers. Southern part of Jigawa comprises of basement complex. Why the north east is made up of sedimentary rock. The main river is Ain Hadeja, Kefinausa, and Iki River with a number of tributaries feeding extensive marshland, marshland of northern, northeastern state. Most part of the state lies within Sudan Savannah with element of Guinea savannah in the southern part. So that forest cover in the state is very much below national average due to both natural and human factor. Forest cover is being depleted. The state enjoys vast fertile arable land, vast fertile arable land, vast fertile arable land, to so which almost all tropical crops who adapt, thus constituting one of the highly prized natural resources of the state. The Sudan savanna vegetation zone is also made up of vast grazing land available for livestock. 
How's that found in found in all parts of the state? It found in all parts of the state. Can you really likely found in a Deja Emirate? The state actually have five Emirates with some trace of Badawa mainly in northeastern part. It has 27 local governments. And I, I tried to visit as many of them. I was in, I, I sat in Bidin Kudu, I was in Duse, I, I know, of course I go to Duse regularly, Babra, Gagalawa, uh, Gumel, <laughs> Guaram, Hadeja, Jaun, Kefi Hausa, Sude Tankraka, <laughs> Ringim and Roni, and of course Kazauri. Kazauri is far away. I mean, you have to go through Kano to get to Kazauri. Population of the state is about 6 million. Imagine that. 6 million. Major crop, hibiscus. Soya beans. Cowpea. Tomato, maize. Granite, millet, rice, sesame, sorghum. How can someone state a state like this is not viable? Is the government that is not viable? Is the leadership that is not viable? The state is viable. The leadership have just made it to be depending on federal allocation. Solid minerals, granite, tin, kaolin, columbite, iron ore and soda ash. Opportunities are in healthcare, tourism, energy, mining, and agri. The idea of Gigawa is 13 billion as of 2019. 13 billion Naira, but the budget in 2020 was 152 billion Naira. Can you see? Can you see? This state is round number two, it has a state that are not viable. It has all season farming. Large, large producer of sesame seed. Um, Megate livestock. Third best SME state in Nigeria. With opportunity in sesame, hibiscus, cowpea, iron, tourism. Unfortunately, unemployment in this state is 38.69%. 38.69%. 85,000 people do nothing in this state. 85,000 people do nothing in this state. Even though the state has what it takes. Can we look at Gigawa State? Highest income till date, 12.9 billion Naira. Federal allocation highest till date, 61.84 billion. What is the total income of this state? 58, as of 2020, 58, or let's say 59 plus nine. That's about 68, 68. This state is owing 42.72 billion. When you combine the domestic debt plus foreign debt. When you combine domestic debt plus foreign debt. Ah, uh, good evening, my chairman. <laughs> Honorable Ramiu. <you. laughs> I is Kano today. Good evening. And thanks for joining. All right. So um look at the state of the current revenue of this state. IGR is 8.67. Federal allocation 58.8. I want you to look at this. Can you see this state having 12.83%? So out of the total revenue of this state, the state can only muster 12.83. All other ones is depending from the FAC account. Operating expense is 60%. And capital is 42. This is one of the reasons why this state is said to be non-viable. 
Let's look at what budget have to say about this interesting state, Jigawa State. According to budget report, Nigerian state of Nigerian state, despite the COVID pandemic, COVID pandemic that's going affect federal revenue, Jigawa earned a statutory revenue of 58.9 in 2020. In the same way, the state generated 39.9% more than its 2.4. 6.4 billion projected tax revenue. However, revenue from tax constituted only 3.67% of total recurring revenue of the 100.37 billion that accrued to the state in 2020. Breakdown of the Gata revenue showed that 99.39% of 3.68 billion generated was corporate taxes, and SEC only raised 40.48 million through direct assessment. If they are acquiring a loan of 1.55 billion to finance its budget deficit, Jiga seems to be one of the few states to have experienced to have, ex have experienced a negative year-on-year -year growth in its total debt stock. However, the state spent 2.26 billion in servicing debt, ranked as the least indebted state in Nigeria. Having spent 2 billion required by this year, the 41. Point 92 billion capital expenditure. The guys has is ascertained to have implemented 86.88.6 percent of his recurring budget and 74.79 percent of his capital expenditure. The budget allocation for capital spending in the state agri sector is 6.12 billion. The state recognizing the importance of agri is giving a lot of attention to. Agreed. You give me a lot of attention to agree. Why not 8.42 of $1.1 billion AMI for capital expenditure or capital spending in the state, agricultural development extension data, program spend, the Fadama 3 development project? I think I even got to know about Fadama when I served in Jigawa State. <laughs> they seem to be very much big into those projects. He just seemed to have prioritized road infrastructure. Also, education was top priority for the state. Jigawa did credibly well in implementation of his education and health sector budget. As Minister of Education, Science and Technology, and Minister of Health effectively assessed 98.63 and 96.92% of the fund MR for capital budget. Hospital and primary center across the state rank high on the agenda of Jigawa State. In 2020, as it disbursed 99.19 of the 1.62 billion allocated to improving general hospitals and primary health centers in the state. What are the potential opportunity available for the business and people Or available to the government and people of the Gaza State. The economy of the Gaza is likely characterized by informal sector activity with agriculture as a major economic activity. Over eighty percent of the population is engaged in subsistence farming and animal husbandry. Trade and commerce are undertaken on small scale, small and medium scale, especially in agri goods, livestock, and other consumer goods. Other informal sector activity include blacksmithing, leather works, tailoring services, auto repair, metal work, carpentry, tanning, dyeing, food processing, mystery. Even though modern agricultural industrial sector is here to gain a solid footing, he had to get a solid footing. The seed for their development was planted through establishment of small scale industry, particularly in the area of food processing and other agro allied activities. There are industrial enterprises in the state, and these industries operate mostly with raw material produced locally. These are in the form of agri and livestock. With an international border to the north, that's Niger, 
The opportunity for cross-border trading activity was taken advantage of by government by initiating and establishing free trade zone at that border I talked about before. It's called Megateri. Megateri Market. Agriculture is the mainstay of the Gaza state economy and contributing 60% of GDP and provide livelihood for 90% of its population. 90% of the population depend on agri. You know, I remember seven in Jigawa traveling from bringing Kudu to Guaram. On Tuesday, there's a particular market. I've forgotten the name of the market. You know, as I go to that market, you will see people coming from far and near. They will sit on a cart. You have two cows. You put a yoke on them and then connect a wood to the back and design a cart that they can sit on with two tires. And they will bring in five, six, seven bags of pro commodities to the market every Tuesday, coming from afar. So I noticed seeing these people going to the market in the morning when I come in and you see a lot of trucks, empty trucks. When I come in, they have to know all these trucks are filled up on their way to Kano, another part of the country. Now, I was say, jokingly saying that if I knew what I know today when I was serving, maybe I would not have left the Gower State. <laughs> because the opportunity in this state is just so huge. And to think that this state is set one of the states that are not viable because of low level of income is just unbelievable. Recent intervention of the government are helping the state to move from subsistence farming to commercial farming. Investors are therefore welcome to tap into the agri investment revolution sweeping is through the state. A lot of people in the south and even people in the north are investing in agri in the Gower state, planting rice and planting sesame seed. The Gower state, one of the largest crop producing states in Nigeria. Currently, the largest producer of date and the biscuit plant. I tasted date palm for the first time in the Gaza State. I noticed people will be hawking it. And I was saying, what is this? He said, it's Dibino. Dibino. Date palm. So I bought it and I tasted it. And since I tasted it, I started buying it regularly. <laughs> Largest producer of date palm and hibiscus in Nigeria. The state is the second largest producer of gum arabic and sesame seed. Top three producing state. Number three in producing rice. And you tell me the Gawa state is not viable? No, it is the government and leadership that are not viable. Invest the Gawa welcome investment in the entire value chain of crop available in the Gawa state landscape. There's a huge potential in terms of food processing. Already food processing companies such as Sonia Food Industry and Risco Food are in the process of establishing tomato paste factories in the state. The factory are in different stages of completion. Despite the fact that the Gawa state is highly competitive in rice, Sesame, granite, wheat, soya, sugarcane, and tomato production. The agricultural sector, vast potential currently. Can you see that? Underutilized. That's why I said the state is viable. It is the leadership of the state that is not viable. Someone said, I think John Manswell has said, everything rises and falls on, leader, on leadership. There are some states in Nigeria, particularly in the northern part of Nigeria, that have all it takes to be very independent of federal government. Very independent of federal government. In terms of revenue. But you know what? The state is underutilizing it like the Gaza state. For example, only a fraction of the available irrigated, irrigable land are cultivated. 
And I'm still for that land of about 400,000 hectares. There's a land acquired for farm project for that man. 25% have been developed. What happened to the remaining 75? There are therefore tremendous opportunities for private sector investment in agri and agro processing. The gas state is a major livestock producing region. It has the weather that is conducive for the rearing of animal, bird, fish, thereby creating opportunity for establishment of slaughterhouse, cold storage facility, transport facility. Investors are also encouraged to venture into dairy production, tannery, and animal feed mill. The state has an appreciable livestock population, currently estimated 3.06 million cattle. 3.06 million cattle in Giga State. 5.6 million sheep. 6.6 million goats in Giga State. The estimated population of poultry is 15.9 million. Giga State has also has the largest livestock west, west market in West Africa. Located at that market, I told you, Megateri Market in the Megateri local government of the state. Now, having looked at the potential, who are the buyers? And what, are, what is the size of this, of the market? Because now it's, to talk, it's time to talk about the opportunities and how the state can take advantage of it, both the businesses in the state, and of course, the government of the state itself, making money directly into the state coffer from export business. So look at rice, for example. The market size of rice in Africa is 6.06 billion and 24.7 billion in the world. Jigawa State produce rice. You can export it to African countries or European or American, but at least African country for a start. Look at another one. Sesame seed. The market size is about 3.45 billion with a market size of demand in Africa of 167 million. I will be showing a model for how the state can generate income and how much the state can make from sesame seed. China, Japan, Turkey, India, Israel, South Korea, Germany, Greece, Egypt, United States, and Mexico are all potential markets for sesame that Jigawase can export to. Then, Granot. The market size is 3.19 billion. In Africa, it's about 171. These are under very interesting market that the state can consider. From China to Indonesia to Russia to Canada to Mexico, huge demand for peanuts. Then, wheat, 44 billion. This state produces wheat. Indonesia, Turkey, Japan, Algeria, Brazil, Italy, Mexico. Even if the state will just target 1% of the market, 2% of the market, 3% of the market, you can imagine what the state is capable of making. The last one is the demand for wheat in Africa is 12.5. And the last one is soya beans. Soya beans. Soya beans, $55 billion demand. And the state is producing, even in Africa, $1.73 billion. So this basically just tells you the Gawa state is viable. It is the government of the Gawa state that are not viable. The leadership are not taking advantage of the opportunity. I don't know if they are not aware. If they say they are not aware, that is the essence of this conversation now. We've done it for different states in Nigeria. 
If they steady say he's looking for money, please show them the video of where the money is and how to make the money in the state. My proposal to Jigawa State is to look at the SME and see how to create common processing center for SME in the state. This can be for value chain of rice or value chain of soya beans or value chain of any of the product the state already have potential and uh, to produce. Why? So as to help SMEs to be able to get finished product for export with that tomato production, for example. The idea is this. If SME is involved in production, harvesting and transport, primary processing and storage, secondary processing and storage, and the same SME or under SME is involved in marketing, sales, logistics, export, and distribution, who have inefficient value chain operator, low processing capacity and low output, few job creation, high cost of production. Because these are small businesses that cannot produce on a large scale. So they can leverage on the economy of scale. Then we we'll have on our hand non-competitive products. And that's the situation right now. Now, imagine that the state wants to develop value chain for tomato. And the tomato, the SME2 go to SME1, you go to process, produce, and harvest, and transport to SME2, who buy from SME1 and give it to the large corporate organization. The large corporate organization job is to process and package in the name of SME2. So you have many SME1, many SME2, and you have different brand of tomato paste in this state, which can then be exported, and of course, so locally, but a different brand. Give keep the farmer busy, increasing demand. Just keep the factory busy with production and packaging, and I'm charged based on the unit produced for me, 100 Naira per unit, for example. So if I do a 1,000 unit, that'll be 100,000 Naira. 100,000 Naira for a 1,000 unit. Just process. I don't have to worry about power, no worry about certification, NAFDAQ, because the factory is large enough to take on all that. This creates efficient value chain operator, high processing capacity and output, good quality and packaging, low cost of production, competitive advantage in terms of pricing in the local market, increased job creation. If there is increased job creation, there will be reduced inequality, but more importantly, of course, decreased insecurity. Decreased insecurity. To support the state businesses in the export market, in Europe, America, and Africa, and Asia, the state can partner with representative at export destination partner with representative at export destination set up warehouses at export destination 
set up entity in form of agent that distributor at destination, partner with independent agent and distributor at destination, organize and sponsor manufacturer for exhibition in the export market. Now, um, okay, now, look at the, how the state can generate income directly. The state has an arable mass of land of 88,130 hectare of land. If half is used for sesame seed, for example, the Haribo land, at a yield per hectare of 1.5 metric ton, possible yield is about 666,835 metric ton. At a unit FOB price of $1,075, you can generate $7,16 million. At CBN explain rate, that's about $297 billion. Cultivating this land, paying the farmer their cost of cultivation and profit, processing, cleaning, and export will cost about $68.02 billion, which the state does not need to provide, but rather guarantee to buy off his citizen to go and produce and pay them after shipment. The budget of the state in 2020 was 156 billion. Sorry, in 2022, rather, it's 169 billion. But from sesame seed alone, and the gestation of this product is about three months. From sesame seed alone, alone, it can generate more than the budget of Jigawa State. This is why I said Jigawa State cannot be a state that is not viable. It is the management, leadership, and government that really are not viable in the sense that they are not thinking of how to solve the problem of the state, creating jobs, and increasing opportunity for the state. Through this, the impact of suggested model is great. The state partner with a special purpose, set, set up a special purpose vehicle with a private sector organization, provide funds to support the venture. So sorry, I had an issue with my network. So, so sorry. Okay. Now, so the state form an alliance with private sector organization, provide funding to form SPV, SPV form farmer into cooperative across the state, issue purchase order to the farmers, backed by guarantee. The SPV provide training, input and support to farmers, provide collection center for harvest, clean the sesame received, process package for export, source for buyers, do documentation and shipment, the have to be prevent document to buyer's bank for payment. After shipment, payment is made upon receipt of payment. The government can pay the farmers in the state, pay their partner, and have more than enough to take care of all the required infrastructure development in this state. The impact of the suggested model for state government goes beyond generation of revenue by export. It has humongous impact on employment generation, increased economic activity in the state. In my opinion, in, it is a more effective and efficient and journey model for diversifying the economy of the state. This model can also be replicated by federal government at the federal level for the exportation of solid mineral. All right, thank you very much, everyone. See you next week. Have a wonderful weekend and bye-bye.